Hey everyone, this video is a walkthrough of the Spin Quick Start Guide. I've already cloned the repo and installed the CLI on my machine so we can get started. This is what the Spin CLI looks like. We'll be using the Spin Up command later in the demo. The other commands are helpful for doing things like building a Spin application from scratch or packaging it up for deployment. If you want to learn about those, check out our docs website. There are several example applications in the examples directory. We're going to walk through the HTTP REST example, so I'm just going to CD into that directory. And I'm going to open it up with my text editor so we can inspect the files. Every spin application has to have a spin.toml file. This is what spin looks at to figure out how to run your application. Up top, we have some general information about the app and below is a list of components in the app and information on how to execute them. Our spin application consists of one component called hello. Every component needs a unique ID and every component also needs a source field. The source field tells us where the path, uh, where the component actually lives. So this is the path the component lives at. And it also has trigger information. This is how the component gets executed. So this is saying that anytime the hello route gets access, the component specified in the source field will get executed. Okay, now let's look at the actual component, which consists of one function called hello world. It takes a request and returns a response. We've set the response status to 200 here. We set a header in the response called bar, which has the value baz, and some text in the body that says hello fermion. This function is annotated with a macro called HTTP underscore component, which comes from the spin SDK. Now, this little macro does a lot for us behind the scenes. It uh, generates a bunch of glue code that helps spin execute this uh, function, and it also marks this function as the entry point for the WebAssembly component itself. Okay. So now we know what our component does and we know how to configure it with spin. So let's go ahead and build our component and then run it with spin. We're gonna build our component using a cargo command, the cargo builds command. And we're gonna specify the target to be uh, wasm32 wasi so that it builds the right type of binary for us. Once that's built, you just gotta make sure that it lives at the same path specified in the source field in the spin.toml file. So we're just gonna make sure that it got put in the right place. So it should be in target slash wasm32 dash wasi slash release. And here we do see that it was built and placed in the right place. And we're just gonna make sure that that's the same path that we specified in the spin.toml file and it is. So all we need to do at this point is run the spin up command to get things running. Okay, so now we've seen that the spin up command uh, is serving this uh, application on the address 127.0.0.1 colon 3000, otherwise known as localhost colon 3000. And we're going to curl the hello route at that address so that uh, we can see our component being executed. And it was, that's so exciting, okay. Um, we can see that the right text was outputted, we have the right header, we have the right status, everything looks good. Now let's go back to our component and let's change the text that is in the body to hello world or hello work, whatever. Um, and we're just going to text, change the header to foo and bar. And we're gonna go back and we're going to control C to quit the spin app. And we're going to just go ahead and rebuild our component and we'll rerun spin up to restart our app and we'll run the same curl commands on below here and we see that our body uh, was updated and the header that we set was also updated so I hope that gives you a, a good idea of how to get started with spin in terms of building HTTP applications and uh, we're hoping that this is a good way for people to get started with uh, WebAssembly components. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out uh, in our GitHub issue queue, on our mailing list, in the comments section. However, um, we'd love to get in touch and see how you feel about the project that we've been working on. Thank you.